Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 109. Now we're just going to continue on with our last one. And in the last tutorial, all we did was actually create the structure for our mob AI finite state machine. And this one here, we're actually going to start setting it up. So let's just start with uh, how is this going to be triggered right down here. So we're triggering on this alive uh, variable here. And I'm actually going to fire that off when they hit the on on trigger enter. So we'll take a look, you know, if they're a player, instead of assigning our target here, well, I guess we could still assign the target there. I want to change alive to equal true. And then actually call that function. And for now, down here, I am just going to, when they leave our little sphere collider, I'm just going to set a live to equal false. Okay, so let's start dissecting things. I'm going to start going up to the start. And... And I'm going to put the uh, value of the state value to init. So state equals ai dot state dot init. And all this here we can redo, but instead of just cutting and pasting it and throwing it, throwing it into our init function, let's actually try it a different way. So I'm just going to comment the whole block of code out. And I'm going to copy the my transform part. So I'll be copy, uh, commenting that out down here as well. So I'll come down to init. I'm going to paste in the my transform part. And the scripts that actually use the components are the scripts that I'm going to use to uh, check to see if they're there. So the character controller uh, we use that mostly in the, uh, what you would call it, the advanced movement script. So that's the script I'm going to check to make sure that it exists in. So I don't really want to check to see if it exists here. So the only one I'm going to check to see if it exists is the sphere collider in this one. And to be honest, I think I'm going to make the sphere collider public now because uh, there are some other things I'm going to want to do with the sphere collider later on. Uh, maybe there's certain spells or abilities that allow your perception range to grow or shrink. So let's go ahead and make that uh, globally. So we're going to say private sphere collider. And I was calling it SC. So I guess now I'll call it underscore. And I'm just going to call it, well, let's just call it sphere collider. And we'll go down to our init, and we're going to check to see if it's there. Of course, I went right by my init, so we'll come down here, and right underneath the my transform, we're going to see if it's there. So underscore sc, whoops, sphere collider. I forgot we renamed it already. Is equal to get component. The component we want, which is the sphere collider. And then let's check. So if sphere collider is equal to null, what I'm going to want to do is throw out a debug message. And we'll throw out an error. And we'll just say sphere collider not present. And then I'm going to return. So basically if it comes in and it does not find the sphere collider, it doesn't go any further into the code for this function and it just jumps out. So it never gets its state changed to setup. But if it does exist and it does 
you know, managed to snag a reference to it, it'll continue on with the code. So now I'm going to go down into setup and we'll put the rest, like here I like to get references to the components that are supposed to exist. And then in the setup is where I actually, you know, do anything with those components that I need to do. So I'm going to come down here now. And in order to get to here, it would have had to have had its state changed, which means the component had to exist. And hopefully we haven't done anything to destroy it. Uh, I'm not, so uh, I'm really not that worried about it. Uh, so what I'm going to say is sphere collider dot center is equal to get component. The component we want is the character collider or sort of the character controller and we want to get its center and another thing we want is the sphere collider dot radius and we're going to set that to its perception range the perception radius Ash, is it I think it's pre perception isn't it PR uh, let me just quickly go up and check I think it's PR, at least today I do anyway. So I'm just going to cut and paste that variable into my setup. Now the way I'm going to want this to work is when the mob is first instantiated or put into the game world, I'm going to want it to run its init and setup and then just stop and wait for the, the actual player to collide with their, their sphere collider. So I'm going to switch the state here to search but under that I'm going to go ahead and set the alive to equal false so it's not still going through uh, the loop and I guess in our start function we'll set it to equal true or we could just set it true up here and I think I'll just set it to true up here so we've got our covert team with our finite state machine in and one thing I almost always forget when I'm first doing it is to tell it that it's a coroutine. So let me just fix that. We're going to want to use start coroutine and there's a couple ways to call it. The one that I like the best is this one here and I believe it's the only one you can use where you can actually stop a coroutine that's already in progress and if you have other variables or uh, parameters that you want to pass into this function you can just put a comma throw in whatever it is you want to send and throw in another one uh, you can put as many parameters as you want at least I haven't had a problem with a limit so that's all done uh, I'm going to quickly comment out my uh, update so let's go down find update which is where basically everything happens but I want to comment it all out I'm actually going to comment the whole function out and just make sure that everything's working that we've got so far <clears throat> so we'll head in see if there's any errors I'm not seeing any pop up so I'm gonna have my dungeon guardian targeted and I'm basically going to see if these values get set right uh, one thing we did forget was the trigger to uh, switch to is trigger so yeah it doesn't seem like it worked so the first thing we want to do is go over to the <clears throat> is trigger or sorry I knit and set up the is trigger so I'll do that down here And the reason why it's not going in there into our finite state machine is because we're not actually calling it. We're just setting the value to be true, like he's alive to be true, but then we're not telling it to uh, start the, the coroutine. So we'll just add that in. We'll go check that out now after it finishes recompiling. Start it up. And there we go. We notice that its trigger got set, its radius got set, 
Uh, the center is the exact same as up there, so now we know we never ever have to touch the sphere collider uh, properties. We just have to make sure that our character controller one. And the character control one we really can't do automatically. Not easily anyway, because we're not really sure how high our model is or how wide or exactly how we want it to position. And I don't believe I've actually done anything with the enter and exit events yet. But let's just see. Nope. Okay. So let's go back into model develop. And we're just over 10 minutes, but before I go, I want to throw in just a little bit of debugs into my finite state machine just to make sure everything's working the way I want it to right now. So I'm going to come down here and I'll want to debug.log. And I just want to see what the alive variable is. So alive, and we'll add in the alive variable. And I'm going to come down to init, and since I want to know how many times it's called, we'll do the same thing, debug.log. And I'm just going to say init. And I'm just actually going to cut and paste this. And I'm going to go down to setup. Paste it into setup as well, but, you know, change the name. And I'll do one more in search. And of course, change it to search. And we'll start this up. So if we follow along, we have alive is true. It goes to init. Then we go through another iteration of the finite state machine. It tells us that alive is still true. It does set up. That tells us that alive is true. It went back to a knit. Alive is true. It went back to a knit. Alive is true. Back into setup. So we're probably going to add a little bit more debugging in there just to see exactly what's happening. Because ideally it should be, you know, alive is true, a knit. Alive is true, setup. And then that's it. But we'll take a look at that in the next uh, tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.